My name is Mina Anwar and I'm the director of a brand new play here at the Customs House called Our Legate. And it's a new play by first time theatre maker Anne Ahmed. And it's brilliant. I've been working, uh, helping her to shape the play for about four and a half months. Um, and it's just been, it's been a fabulous um, foray into understanding her life as she lived in Leggett, it's set in 1968, and her family. And also there's other source material of people that lived in that area. And the history of that area is that in 68, um, they were gonna demolish the houses, the Housing Act came in, fair housing, that said that any houses that um, had outside toilets and no kitchens were not fit for purpose and they were gonna be demolished. So uh, the people that lived in that area we're going to get new houses from the council. And it's, that is the kind of premise of it. And it's about her, uh, Maggie Ibrahim, and her children, and her husband, who's been away at sea, and he's a, a Yemeni sailor, who's a cook on the ships. And I think what's really fascinating about the story is understanding how those women and children live their life when their husbands were away and sometimes they're away for like two years at a time uh, which is why some in this play there's two years between the ages of the kids because they came back they'd go and not knowing when they go back when they were coming back if they were coming back and how those women and children I think what was really important to Anne is knowing that even though all of that stuff was going on and there was like a bigger picture of of the the seafaring life that they lived in this multicultural area that had, God, that just the, the number of people that lived there, you know, there was Somalis, Arabs, there was Mauritians, there was English, Scottish. There were so many people that lived in that area uh, during the 60s. And they all came from different, lots of them uh, like fought, fought for the war. So they like uh, sailed the seas uh, on behalf of the British and, and then, settled here in South Shields as well and they had to be near a port so Legate for some of them was where they rocked up and then uh, made their homes and made their lives and it's a really fascinating story to me the story in itself I mean there's so many stories and we're ha pinpointing one which is Anne's, Anne's life her connections to her memories and also just a kind of it's a fiction based on lots of things that might have happened in that time. The kind of the life they lived, where those kids were running around, the women were dealing with stuff, how they dealt with, you know, their neighbours. You know, there's a, the uh, Somali cafe owner, and the bigger stories of like the boarding houses. And it's just um, trying to create a community and a snapshot and a two week event, really. And that's what this, where this play is set. And it's been an interesting uh, dramaturgical conundrum in a way to reimagine it for the stage. I think, first, I think it's really important that we see different narratives on the stage. And I don't think uh, a, people of dual heritage, particularly, have had their narratives as as strongly as this in a play that is actually about that um, and you just don't see it and also I think it's really important who tells those stories so it's really important to us to be completely authentic with casting and so that we have people who's who identified with that narrative so that they could bring some of themselves to the play as well and even though it's a period piece there's a sensibility in which someone can live and knowing how they identify in the world, having two come, having parents from two different cultures, how they just live in the world, how they attack it, how they experience it, and then bring that into the play. And I think we just don't see it. And especially, it's, this is, to me, seems quite unique uh, up here in the Northeast to have a play with this kind of diversity of cast and having, this is a lot of women again in this play, um, and I just think it's, I think one of the, it's like from Hamilton, there's that line, who tells your story? I think it's really important who tells the story. And this is written by a woman um, whose father was, you know, half Yemeni, her mum was Scottish. 
and the authenticity of which she wants to bring this story to the fore, I think is, is as I think it's just really relevant right now in the zeitgeist we're in now to understand that there's an authenticity to a story and let's just put it on and see see how brave we can be by putting that story on the stage. This play is, it's like a lot of period drama. You know, there's always, the, what, what's important is that people watch it and there's something in it that can resonate with you or you reflect on. And to me, what was interesting about um, helping Anne to reimagine this play is that to, it was a lot about the kind of the, we see a lot about like the refugee stories or people that are kind of come to a place where they feel like whether they're going to make their home here, how do they feel like they belong, how do we deal with the other, how do we deal with otherness, how do we deal with understanding the changing faces of our communities, how do we come together um, and who is your support network? And Leggett, uh, having talked to Anne, sharing months, talking to her about it, that's what it seemed like to her, is that they lived in, in like a world in a bubble. She's put in the play, it was a world in a bubble. And I think that, just knowing that that support network was there for you, and I think after the pandemic and where we've been, we're so closely tied together in our communities, we have been over the last year, that we seem to know everybody in it. And I think this might resonate there of thinking, who helped you when you needed something? Who was there for you? How would you feel as if, if, you, if they were to, to leave or you weren't going to be, be their neighbours anymore? And I think just in a general, you know, dealing with racism and intolerance and prejudice, there's, there's so many things in this play. It'll either make you feel, some of it will make you uncomfortable and, it, and it's on purpose. You know, there's a layer of this play that is like, looking in on it as well, looking in on, there's like a balance of who, who is looking at that place and seeing their streets change. How do they try to keep control of what they understand? Um, and I think it's just really, I just think some of it, uh, it'll make you laugh, it'll make you cry, it'll make, it'll make some, me feel uncomfortable. I, I hope it makes you feel uncomfortable in a way that you might think about it yourself and think, do I know people like that? Or whereas I ever a person like that? Am I like that somewhere in my life? Inadvertently don't know that I'm like that. Um, and I think it's, I think it's, if there's a lot of layers in there. I don't even know if I know half of, of the layers that are in this play right now. It's, that's what's very, I like to be surprised by it. And I'm surprised by it every day. Because also it's now coming from Anne to me, to know the actors, because then it comes becomes such a collaborative process that the actors then bring things that you don't even realise that are there, and that's that's a true collaboration, I think. I think the thing, what's so special about the Customs House um, is its is Ray's ability as well to spot uh, that there's first-time theatre makers or first-time directors like I was a first-time director, professional director when I came here in 2016. And to give that person a platform for their story. And it's very brave. She's, uh, Anne is a first-time writer of a play, first-time theatre maker. And to put her with someone who, you know, I mean, I'm from Indian background, so there's certain parallels in which you know, I was born in 1969, there was like a parallels at which you live in a northern town that had, from a working class family, first generation immigrants, those types of things. But I think the Customs House is so, I just think, especially where we've been after the pandemic, to be as brave as putting first time theatre makers, first time, some of these actors have never been here, you know, and never worked here. I just think that's really extraordinary. I think. It's, and the Customs House, I don't know, sometimes, I always think the Customs House makes world-class shows. And I think because it's not one of the bigger theatres, it gets overlooked. But actually, some of the bravery at which the work happens in this space at the Customs House 
is worthy of anyone travelling here to see it. It does. I would go and I just think that's really important, and I think the Customs House sometimes gets overlooked by some of the bigger theatres, and yet does the most explorative, brave work. I think of anywhere in the northeast. It's an interesting story because it does have this this life inside where you know that people are just getting on with life. They, there's lots of like dark things happening, there's lots of like changes happening in their lives, about to move house, what is like the future holds, but they get on with it, they try to find like the joy from each other and almost like how do they support each other during this time. But also there's, there's some deeper layers about, you know, try to put in the deeper layers about a sea, the seafaring life. You know, what was really fascinating learning about these stories is also the darker stories of, of some of the Yemeni sailors' lives, uh, the Somali sailors' lives, where the life at sea had its own dangers, you know, had its own traumas, and how those people then become in the fabric of this community, and how do they, what facade do they have, what masks do they have, and what darkness it actually hides. And I think we'll try to put some of that in. There's some real like soul searching going on as well, you know, I can't, not giving you any spoilers, but there is some real heartfelt, you know, people coming together and really just that thing of cherishing each other, nurturing each other, being vulnerable with each other, and then helping each other through. So there's some real moments of joy and there's some real moments of lightness, but there's some, like, some really beautiful soul-searching uh, scenes in there as well. So I just think it's, it's like a, almost like a play of two halves, really. And I think it's got a, hopefully, when we get there, a bit too soon, it'll have, you know, all of that like light and shade for everyone. And there's a lot of local references. You know, it's really important to keep all local references that people like understand, they hear it, they see it in the, in the set, and that they feel like this play is either for them because they were from here and they understand it and they're part of, you know, may, may know where Leggett is. Or, you know, if you never knew anything about Leggett, you might come away going, what an extraordinary, interesting place that was. Set right there in the northeast in 68. A place feels like, you know, the world in a bubble, that's what it was. Yeah, amazing.